For over 50 years after the death of Waltz, treasure hunters followed the ambiguous clues that the Dutchman left behind as to the whereabouts of his mine. Something significant changed in 1949 when the so-called Peralta Stones were discovered in the desert. A Mexican brachero, a legal migrant laborer, was digging fence posts near Black Point, in Pinal County, when he came across a large flat stone. He dug the stone out only to find that it was covered in strange writing. He recognized a Spanish word, Indian petroglyphs, and some Spanish markings. In all, the brachero dug up three stones carved with writing and a crude map. The brachero hauled the curious stones into Florence Junction, three miles away, where he washed them, and prepared to sell the curious stones to any willing tourist who might come along. Robert G. Tumlinson, or Travis E. Tumlinson depending on who is telling the story, of Portland, Oregon, turned out to be that tourist. The brachero pocketed the equivalent of a week's wages, and Tumlinson drove off with the stones. Tumlinson went on to Phoenix, to visit his brother. The two brothers thoroughly washed the rocks and examined them, determining that what they were looking at was some kind of coded map. Tumlinson spent a number of years in the Superstition Mountains trying to track down clues from the stones. The stones emerged again in the early 1960s, after Tumlinson's death. One Clarence O. Mitchell persuaded Tumlinson's widow that he could decipher the stone maps. Mitchell organized a corporation in Nevada and began a stock-selling campaign among his friends and close associates to raise capital for the treasure expedition. Eventually Mitchell ran into difficulties with the Securities and Exchange Commission for overselling the number of shares the corporation had issued, and for selling in regulated stocks. The corporation was forced into bankruptcy. In 1964, freelance writer Richard B. Stoley sold a story about the stone maps to Life magazine. The article provided the first public photographs of the Peralta stones, although certain markings on the maps were covered by black tape. These photographs inflamed the nation's imagination. In 1967, Barry Storm, the Dean of American Treasure Hunters, wrote an article for Treasure Hunters magazine relating his attempts to decipher the stone maps. This article was followed by a variety of other writers, photographers, filmmakers and con men who have since used the Peralta stones as a justification for seeking treasure in the Superstition Mountains. So the real question is, are the Peralta stones real or fake?